This is All India Radio. In the program spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on India's strides for clean and green energy. The participants are Dr. Srikant K. Panikrahi, Director General of Indian Institute of Sustainable Development and Sanjay Jha, journalist. India recognizes poverty eradication along with green growth as central to India's sustainable development narrative and it is taking a number of green initiatives and switching to renewable energy for its upcoming major projects, trade ports, railway stations and cities are smartly and creatively being developed to minimize carbon emissions making the country a fast-growing green energy consumer. As per the International Energy Agency, India is fastest-growing energy consumer in market till 2040. In this context, the role of green energy becomes very, very important when the whole world is talking about green energy, climate change. And according to IEA's forecast, use of renewable energy will be able to majorly fulfill the demand, particularly because of a sharp drop in the prices of renewable energy. Professor Panikrahi, what do you think about our initiative on green front Government has taken a number of dynamic actions in green energy area. The most important is we have achieved 40% of our installed capacity as renewable energy, which is a major milestone. India is now having 156.83 gigawatt of renewable energy and from non-fossil fuel sector out of which 150.05 is solar and other renewables, whereas around 6.78 gigawatt is from nuclear. All of them makes from non-fossil fuel sector. So it has been appreciated and praised throughout the world. The next thing is India is spending 12 lakhs crores in importing energy, which has made us energy-dependent country. So we should be as early as possible energy independent. So under Atmanirbhar Bharat, India is thinking big. India wants to be a global hub for green energy production and exports as well. And for that, India is already prepared and National Hydrogen Mission is in place. In addition, we are taking a number of action under solar energy mission and various green energy initiatives. Electric vehicles is also at the top of the agenda and we are targeting two-wheelers and three-wheelers first. You know, you talked about India's reason for greener energy. Currently, India is largely dependent on fossil fuels imports to meet its energy demand. About 70% of our electricity generation coming from burning them. Fuel imports are also costing the country a huge amount in terms of valuable foreign capital, and which can be a constraint if the needs are met by renewable energy. So it is a quite a laudable effort by the Prime Minister and this current government to switch India's requirement to the green energy, which is indigenous, cheaper, and environment-friendly. Apart from switching to the green energy, the government of India has also launched a number of schemes to safeguard the environment and to promote a greener India. We have seen the schemes like National Clean Air Program, Swachh Bharat Avyan, Green Skill Development Program, Namami Gange Program. Purpose of these is to make environment more nature friendly, lessen the impact of the climate change and make environment more friendly. What do you think about these initiatives? How much are these going to help safeguard the environment and promote the greener India? These are very laudable initiatives which are historic in nature. And all of these together will help India to be self-reliant to reduce its emissions as well as pollution. And there is a significant initiative under National Clean Air Program. Detailed monitoring systems are in place. And accordingly, the initiatives for drastic reduction of air pollution is being taken. Under Namami Ganga program, combined effluent treatment plant has been taken off, which is likely to reduce the load of biodisposals, which is increasing the biological oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand in the river water quality in Ganges. And a number of significant projects are in place. 
the most laudable initiative is on india's commitment on land degradation india wants to be land degradation neutral by 2030 in last 10 years around 3 million hectares of forest cover has been added in india making total forest coverage almost one fourth of the country's total area again india is committed to enhance its greenery through a number of projects and targeting for 26 million hectares of degradation land to be under land neutrality which will aid additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent thereby meeting one of our paris climate change agreement commitment by 2030 in forestry and green plantation sector there is such a series of very impressive initiatives has been taken in indian environment sector which will help us to reducing the pollution loads drastically the more we reduce the more the load also increasing because of our living style is increasing our ambition for a better quality of life is increasing and number of people are also increasing in our population figure so keeping this in mind we need drastic actions against pollution and emission reduction but india is already in its aggressive path which is meeting its requirement you spoke about the paris climate change cop 26 was held in glasgow and india played a very very significant role especially in the context that you know the russians the chinese were not there and the indian prime minister attended it and he told the world about his seriousness about combating the climate change india has demonstrated the will to do more than its fair share of responsibilities as an emerging global leader india's climate change action was very significant for regional as well as the global impact so in that context the prime minister's announcement of net zero carbon emitter by 2070 and announcing enhanced target for renewable energy deployment reduction in carbon emissions i mean achieving these targets will require focus on three important areas increasing renewable energy capacity decarbonizing emission intensive sectors and creating more carbon sinks so we saw that most prominent of this targets was that india's goal to produce 500 gigawatt of renewable energy by 2030 and it's ambitious target to achieve you know net zero by 2070 honorable prime minister announced in glasgow cop 26 that india is a developing nation and india's right over its carbon space is not given by developed nations still india will be very happy to contribute in planet's protection in aggressive manner he gave panchamrut panchamrut means five commitments to protect the planet to take care that 1.5 degree within that the planet's temperature remains India has already declared in its intended national determined contribution which become NDC in Paris and these commitments are much more aggressive commitments than that of India's NDC which was declared in 2015 the first declaration is India will bring its non fossil fuel capacity to 500 gigawatt by 2030 the second commitment is india will fulfill at least 50% of its energy need from non fossil fuel sector india will cut down its net projected carbon emissions to the extent of 1 billion ton carbon equivalent by 2030 and the four commitment is india will bring down its carbon intensity more than 45% of its gdp against earlier commitment of 33 to 35% and the fifth commitment was india will achieve the net zero target by 2070 so these are very aggressive commitments professor panikri we started this discussion about india's growing need for energy and how it is pursuing the alternative source of energy the greener energy and we have seen major trust on developing ethanol biofuel hydrogen energy 
India is now set to be the third largest ethanol market by 2026. And the government of India has resolved to meet the target of 20% ethanol blending in petrol by 2025. Earlier target was set for 2030. That means that target has been advanced by five years. So just to make uh, Indian climate better and we have less carbon emission when we add more ethanol in that. And also it will increase our dependence on alternative fuel. International Energy Agency has said that India has tripled ethanol demand to an estimated 3 billion liters between 2017 and 2021. So in last three years itself, we have increased our demand of ethanol by triple. And because of India's growing appetite, now Asia is set to overtake Europe in terms of biofuels production by 2026. So that's like India is giving the leadership role in alternative fuel. Yes, you are perfectly correct. India is emerging as a world leader in terms of alternative fuels. Indian uh, solar energy production has already established its credentials, which is growing at the fastest rate in the planet. Our wind energy uh, is adding substantially to our basket. And now we are taking drastic actions for offshore winds. So in the coastal areas in nearby sea, you will see now windmills which are coming up hugely in uh, Tamil Nadu coast as well as uh, Gujarat coast and few other parts of the country. In addition, National Hydrogen Mission is committed to produce huge quantity of green hydrogen, and not only for India, it will also targeting to exports to other countries and make India as a green hydrogen hub of the planet. In addition, we are trying to generate attractive energy from bio-wastes and basically our bio-solid waste and landfill sites. Uh, we will capture the methanes, methane gas, which is a greenhouse gas from these landfill sites and utilize it in value addition to light our hospitals, our homes, and for lightening purpose, largely we will be consuming methane. And uh, there is a lot of energy recovery from waste plants are coming up, both from effluents and uh, sways in the different part of the country. In waste management sector, there is a revolution coming in. So these are uh, many of the appreciable and landmark initiatives India is taking, which is certainly most uh, laudable and uh, to be noticed with in comparison to other nations of the planet. Absolutely. We have seen the biofuels provide a sustainable energy system that is renewable, environment-friendly, and capable of utilizing indigenous raw materials. And through various domestic and international initiatives in the biofuel industry, in the last few years, India has reiterated its inclination to explore biosolutions and yet another form of renewable energy and alternative to the fossil fuels. And that is why the announcement of developing integrated biorefineries at COP26 also shows a willingness on India's part to explore biosolutions as a viable form of renewable energy to help realize the goal of energy self-reliance. Professor Panigari, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. You were listening to a discussion on India's strides for clean and green energy. The participants were Dr. Srikant K. Panigrahi, Director General of Indian Institute of Sustainable Development and Sanjay Jha, Journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on a mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may email opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.